Hello, my name is David Clayton. I am Provost of Pontifex University, which you can find online at all the W's pontifex.university. And my blog is thewayofbeauty.org. I'm going to talk about Legoland. What's the reason for its success? I'm going to contrast Legoland with another attraction for children uh, and grown-ups too, because I quite enjoyed going there, Regent Park Zoo, um, and say, is there a reason for uh, the success of Legoland, which is extraordinary, if anybody's ever been there knows. So Legoland, the one I went to is in Windsor, um, and it is a, a, a plastic world by definition. <laughs> all, all Lego bricks are made of plastic. Um, you have all these sculptures and models made of Lego bricks, and the world that they are creating is itself uh, imaginary. So it's an imaged world of an imaginary world. They tap in, it taps into modern culture, and so uh, you might call it a McDisney aesthetic. It is a, a plastic image of uh, a, a Disney-like imaginary world. It's, it's not all Disney. You might have Star Wars or something like that, uh, but it is uh, many steps removed from reality. And is this a good thing? Um, now, what is there to do when you go here? You don't just look at models. You have all these uh, rides. It's like a sort of theme park fairground. And what is extraordinary is that uh, kids absolutely love this. Uh, when I was there recently, we were leaving and uh, kids had, who'd spent hours there were crying. They wanted more. They wanted that we, You can't possibly see all the attractions. It's like a sort of um, Disney World made of plastic. You, know, there's, you get in and you pay uh, the not insignificant entrance fee. Um, and then you go on these rides and quite a lot of them you have to line up uh, to, because the demand is so great. There's even a hotel at Legoland in Windsor, um, which uh, incidentally is on a hill which overlooks Windsor Castle. And so presumably the queen can look out of her bedroom window and while Legoland has a view of Windsor Castle, Windsor Castle has a view of Legoland. So that must be nice for her. Um, here's Regent's Park Zoo. Now I much preferred this. Uh, you see the animals and it does have to, it has reinvented itself recently because zoos are not, uh, well, at one stage, they're a little bit um, out of fashion uh, because it was felt that they weren't really contributing to the, uh, the environment particularly. So they've had to sort of reinvent themselves as a, an environmental theme park um, and so a lot, you know, the, the, a lot of the way they present the information is with that in mind. Uh, presumably this keeps the eco-warriors at bay. Uh, although when you go there, it's pretty much, I used to go to Chester Zoo in the north of England, which in the day in the 60s and 70s when people weren't so worried about that sort of thing. And it feels pretty much like going to Chester Zoo did when I was young. It's just that they, they don't talk about global warming so much so much or they didn't in those days as they do now um, so you can actually when you're at regents park zoo things aren't made of plastic <laughs> you have real uh tigers and lions this is the uh, and gorillas as we see here uh, there are actually tigers there and we saw a tiger uh, as usual with big cats they're rarely doing anything very active they just seem to spend most of the day sleeping in the sun but nevertheless it was exciting to see them. Now, I'm just going to look at Christ in a second. What is the reason for the success? If you're culturally conservative like me, you would tend to say that it's better to go to the zoo than to go to Legoland. Certainly, uh, I, I found the Legoland experience, it was great to see the, the children enjoying themselves. That was a delight. So for that reason, I enjoyed it. But um, the whole sort of plastic aesthetic of the place of Legoland was uh, I found stifling it's enormous by the way you just can't get away from it once you're in there it, the whole thing surrounds you at every angle up high and 
of you know, north, south, east, west, as far as you can see. Um, the, the, there's, so for someone like me, uh, relatively culturally conservative, the tendency is to argue that it's much better for the soul, even for these children, whatever they may think, to go to Regent's Park Zoo. Now, the, they enjoy both, um, but I think the evidence is that Legoland is more enjoyable, just judging from the thousands and thousands that go there. As I mentioned, there's even a hotel. So presumably people go and spend whole vacations of Legoland. Um, so why might this be? Well, I think that Legoland is actually tapping into something uh, that is intrinsic to us, and that is that we are built to see realities through images. So even though the reality, if I can call it that, that Legoland portrays is not uh, real, it's, it's they're tapping into popular culture, so it's the uh, the narratives, the stories of films, largely. Um, nevertheless, the, they create images of these places. Now, this is intrinsic to man. We are made to see uh, realities through images. Um, we can, uh, those who have seen the image of, those who have seen Christ have seen uh, the image of the invisible God, Christ said. Now, we see Christ in the Blessed Sacrament, but other than that, even he is a uh, largely a figure in our imaginations, um, and the, 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 we, the church feeds that imagination with an image. Um, and this is not only seen by the church as something that is useful or nice to have, churches are mandated to have images. People died um, in the past, uh, in order to protect the uh, the idea that images should be uh, held within churches in the iconoclastic period in the eighth and ninth centuries or those periods um, there are martyrs of people who argued for the inclusion of icons in churches and were killed for it it was that important to them now why is this well because if we're going to be people of faith um, we, go, we have to believe in a God who we can't see. And so therefore, we have to be able to relate the things we can see um, and understand them um, symbolically and relate images to prototypes. So through the image of Christ, we, we have um, in our imaginations a picture of the real Christ. Um, and from that picture of the real Christ, we have a picture of the Father, because those who've seen Christ have seen the Father, have seen the Son, have seen the Father. Um, and so that, that incidentally is a mosaic done by my, my uh, former teacher, Aidan Hart, a good friend uh, based in England, an orthodox iconographer. This is a painting by me. Uh, it's a uh, it's actually in the back of my book or, that I wrote, uh, I wrote jointly with Lila Lawler called The Little Oratory. So you can get a copy of this in the book and put it in your icon corner. Um, but we are really, um, I was going to say mandated. It isn't quite true, but uh, our prayers really, um, if we're going to retain the faith, uh, we, we, it is good to develop the habit and to teach to our children the habit of praying with images because this will preserve the faith by developing within us, within us that faculty for relating image to prototype. Um, and it's not just with Christ, of course, saints. Here's John the Baptist. This is another icon that I have painted. Um, and through this and through the use of our imaginations, uh, John the Baptist is made more real, and this develops within us that capacity for faith, for actually grasping realities which are not otherwise attainable, um, except through, are not attainable except through faith. Um, we relate the things that we can perceive with our senses to those that we can't. Image and symbol are particularly important in doing this. And furthermore, uh, this should not be arduous. We are made by God with this facility 
to see uh, through his creation a picture of the creator. So here is a picture of the creator and his creation. But when we look at creation itself, as we do at Regent's Park Zoo, for example, um, what the, uh, we, some of us might be seeing is uh, the glory of the creator in his creatures. Um, those of us who um, are alert to this and have that uh, facility, if you like, developed within us. Um, so when we see a wonderful scene like this, so this is a photograph, of course, that you're seeing, but if we're standing at the beach and we see a, a wave turning, we might uh, really stand in awe and wonder at the thing itself and the beauty of it. And for the neo-pagan, um, or the pagan, or the, the when I say neo-pagan, I'm thinking here of the radical environmentalist movement, which is godless. Um, it stops there. However, for those who are used to relating images to realities, uh, that awe and wonder is more likely, it's not inevitable, but is more likely to be then transferred to the one who made it. Uh, and so through this, the image of the wave, we imagine the real wave, and when that, that ability to take steps from images to prototypes, from uh, the visible to the invisible, we are then likely to take that next step, one hopes, to God. So images of waves uh, that are very obviously images. This is not meant to be photographic. This is a, a Japanese woodcut from the 18th century, very famous picture adopted by surfers. Why didn't they just print a photograph? Well, it's we delight in seeing images and using our imaginations because uh, it is good to do so. It is part of uh, our nature. God made us like that, ultimately, so that we would have faith um, and see God through these things. Um, and when... Uh, through images and through symbols, our imaginations are directed well. Uh, we delight in this, and artists know this, and they make use of it, and they, they can make money by selling pictures through it. If the picture is good, I, I don't see that's a bad thing at all. I would say that I'm an artist. Um, and so when we look at a beautiful landscape, um, then we might uh, see the creator in it, but that facility for doing so is going to be enhanced by looking also at images of landscapes. This is a landscape that I painted. Um, and you can see that I've deliberately made this um, stylized. Um, I don't want this to look like a photograph. I want this, to, when you look at this, to know that this is an image, but to understand what this is an image of. And the idea then is that we delight in imagining the reality uh, from the image. And for Christians, this is really important because if we, if we lose this, and especially if sacred art, and we don't engage with that in the liturgy, uh, we will lose the faith. And I, my feeling is that that's one reason why the faith has declined so much in, over the last, you know, this period of modernity, is because we have lost that habit, especially going to a Catholic church uh, whether traditional or liberal, and see how often we're really engaging with the images, a Roman Catholic church this is, really engaging with the images in our worship, very rarely, I would say. Even if there's beautiful art there, it's a backdrop. It's not in, intrinsic to our worship. And uh, I'm going to put that up in a second. Uh, what I would say then is that Christians uh, perhaps... Um, ought to think about this, um, that when we look at Legoland, why is it so successful? Well, it's, it's, it's actually because it is so obviously an image. Those children are delighting in the fact that they're seeing images of things which they can imagine. And the fact that it's an image of something that they delight in, uh, in this case, a, a story um, of a film, which they've seen in other styles of images, makes it even more delightful. It appeals to them because it engages their imaginations. And we, we enjoy that. Now, it doesn't work for me as an adult. I find that poor, but Christians should be aware of that. There's power to this, and we can use that for the good. I don't think there's anything wrong 
with Legoland. And so they had rather the aesthetic was slightly more appealing, but that just says it could be even better and even more successful if we Christians choose, chose to make use of that. So maybe Regent's Park uh, needs Legoland <laughs> in order for it to have true meaning, which is to show God through his creatures. And if it did that, it wouldn't have to worry about the Nego pagan eco warriors saying that zoos don't have a place. Uh, I think they do. I, I, by the way, I'm not against the environment or uh, I, I'm not in favor of cruelty to animals. And I do not want to see species go extinct in case you're wondering. I do care about those things. But I don't see these things as an end in themselves, that uh, they are there so that we might delight in them. And as good stewards, we want to maintain their existence and nurture them and cultivate them uh, as part of nature ourselves so that all might lead us to God. And I think that um, as Christians, we could really make use of this far more. I, the Victorians started the process of zoos i think um i think the first zoos would be during the 19th century uh, and i'm pretty sure that uh, this was not lost on them that uh, it wasn't just the fun of seeing something exotic that um it is through the, in their own way and of course we probably wouldn't approve of the conditions they're in nowadays and even i wouldn't uh, but nevertheless to allow people to see wonderful things created by god so that we might have be in awe of his, the creator through his creatures is a good thing. Um, and Legoland is feeding into that. That is why I believe it is so successful.